Thank you, Sister Mary, for praying. We have come to a very important uh, aspect of Christian life, the third chapter of James. And every, every word in the Bible is flawless. Uh, everything is important, but especially in the context of uh, God working in and through us. Uh, Ephesians 2.10 says we are the workmanship of God. He works in and through us to show us to the world a display of a splendor. While he is working in us, we can come in the way of his work by being unwise and speaking unwise words. The tongue is a very important aspect of Christian life, what we speak. And in this uh, section, verse 1 to 11 of James chapter 3, a very familiar passage, but I believe something new some God revealed to us this morning to take to heart and to practice it. So we'll go on to verse 1 onwards from James chapter 3. As I read, I'll go verse by verse as usual. In uh, chapter 3, verse 1, James writes, Not many of you should presume should become teachers or presume to be teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that those who teach will be judged more strictly. Now, as we uh, realize that each one of us in some way or the other uh, is a teacher, meaning uh, somebody in the other we are teaching, a small group, one-to-one, -one, or maybe in a large group. So whatever we understand, we are called to share. As compared to proclaiming or uh, preaching, teaching is imparting. Preaching is proclaiming, teaching is imparting. Whatever knowledge we have, we impart to others and we make common what we know to others. So in a way, all of us are teachers. But in the church, God has given some to be teachers. Uh, for example, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, Paul writes, He gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be teachers, and some to be pastors. And therefore, the warning here, or caution here is, if you want to be a teacher, you'll be judged more strictly. God has a very, very high standard for us, even as we draw closer and closer to God. Sometimes people ask this question. Moses led Israel from Egypt, people of Israel from Egypt all the way to Israel. One act of indiscretion, he lost his school by the waters of Meribah. And all because of that, God said, you will not enter the land of Canaan. Is this not being unfair? He blasphemy. me. That's because God is a friend of God. Moses is a friend of God. The closer we are to God, the more answerable we are to God. And therefore, uh, he expects more from us. You know, in the Old Testament, Amos chapter 3, verse 2, it's written, God says to his people, You only have I chosen among all the families of this earth. Therefore, I will punish you for your sin. Among all the people of the world, I have chosen you. Among all the families of the earth, I have chosen you. Therefore, I will punish you. I have a high standard for you. So as God's people will teach God's word, he will be judged more strictly. And he goes on to say, we all stumble in many ways. Look at verse uh, 2. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault is in what they do is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check. All of us stumble in many ways. And if anyone can never uh, stumbles, then he's perfect. And the word perfect is teleon. Is in a way often I shared this verse, uh, the particular word, Greek word, teleon, which means complete. Complete. Perfect, complete. But all of us, uh, we falter, we stumble. But then when we stumble, God lifts us up. We shouldn't remain in the ground. He lift, up, lift us up. And therefore, if we are going to be preachers of God's word or teachers of God's word, it's very important that we put a tight rein on our tongue. Because the tongue, as you're going to see later on the next few verses, is a, a very dangerous part of the body, a restless evil full of deadly poison. It was James writes. So, let's remember, in the Bible, Paul was very, very particular that his servants speak the right words. Before Isaiah was chosen, chosen to be a prophet, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 8, the Lord uh, made the seraph take a live coal from the altar and touch Isaiah's mouth. And then the seraph says, injuring being, says, this touched the mouth, your sin is atoned for. 
Because when Isaiah saw the glory of God, his response was, Woe to me, I am ruined. I am a man of unclean lips. And live among people on unclean lips. That's in the glory of God. Unclean lips. Lips had to be touched by God. Sin removed. Only then God asked him a question. Who will go for us? Whom shall I send? Isaiah says, here am I sending. Before he was sent, his mouth has to be, had to be touched by God. Again, he didn't find the Bible. That, for example, Jeremiah. When Jeremiah was complaining to God about the persecutors, avenge me on my persecutors. He was very upset with the persecutors and telling God, Lord, avenge me. I'm speaking your word. Why are they against me? You take, uh, speak on my behalf and attack them. In fact, he advises God to kill them. In Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. And then, in verse 19, God replies to Jeremiah, If you repent, I will restore you to the serve me. If you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesman. If you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesman. A spokeswoman in our case. Some of us are ladies who share the word of God, prophesy. So it's important that the same mouth that speaks God's word cannot be indulging in unnecessary, foolish talk, all kinds of words we speak. And therefore, God has a very high standard for us and we must live up to the standard by the grace of God. Let's go on from verse, th verse uh, 3. He's giving examples. Three examples he's going to give here. James. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal around. Turn the whole animal. The word animal here, like the original Greek is a word called soma. Soma means body. You know, a small little bit you put in, uh, before a horse, the whole body, powerful body of a horse gets turned around. You can control the horse by a bit and bridle. And it goes, it's going to go on to say how the human being's personality is a very big personality. One little part of the human being, of the body, the tongue, the tongue decides the whole course of the person's life. Words once spoken can't be taken back. That's why the Bible says in Matthew 12, 36, Matthew 12, 36, Jesus says, we have to give an account to God for every careless word we have spoken. Every careless word we speak, we are going to give an account to God. We are ambassadors of Christ. Any ambassador in any other country is carefully watched by the people living in the country. If you are ambassador of India and America, whatever you speak anywhere, any place is reported by the journalist as India says. Not what you say, India says. We are ambassador of Christ on earth. So every word we speak, people take careful note of. And one out of place word spoken will tarnish the workmanship of God. God won't, loves to work in and through us. But we can come in the way of God by being unwise and speaking loose words. Just like a big horse, a powerful horse can be controlled by a small little bit. The whole body of the horse can be directed by one small bit. Same way our entire personality can be affected by one loose word spoken by the tongue. It's a very dangerous instrument. And we're going to see how we can, God can tame the tongue. Let's go to the next verse. Verse 4, or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by stormy winds, they are stirred by a very small rudder, very small rudder, wherever the pilot wants to go. Again, a very large entity controlled by a small little entity, a rudder. You know, the interesting thing is the word for rudder in Greek is pedalio, pedalio. And very uh, ironically, in an aircraft, the rudder is the one behind, which uh, decides when aircraft goes right or left, port side or starboard side. That's what they use in terminology. Port, starboard, ships and for aircrafts. And the rudder is actually a vertical thing. And uh, it can go like this. It's controlled by pedals. They call it rudder pedals. Aircraft has many uh, basic uh, controls of aircraft are the throttle for power. They call them steering column for uh, nose up, nose down, elevator, as they call it. 
elevator goes up and down. Then there are the sideways ailerons, aerofoil ailerons for turning banking, and rudder for right or left. Rudder pedals. With the legs, the pilot will push the pedals to move the rudder. So interesting, isn't it? 2000 years ago, the pedal is used for rudder. And today, rudder pedals are used for controlling the rudder of an aircraft or of a ship. So basically, what it means is a small little entity at the rear of the entity. In the case of a ship, it's in the rear. In the case of aircraft, it's in the rear. And that controls the entire course of the larger entity. A big horse controlled by a small bit. A big ship controlled by a small rudder. Look at the next one. Verse 5. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Great boasts. The word for great boasts is actually, great is actually Megala or Megala. Megala is a name actually in South India. It means exceedingly great, exceedingly great. Megala, mega, mega means great. Megala is what is used here. So uh, the, the, the little tongue, small part, makes great boasts, speaks a lot of things. And uh, the entire personality of a human being is controlled by a small tongue, small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. So look at the next part, next part. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. You know, we noticed uh, in the TV recently, every summer it happens in California, uh, a small little spark triggers a forest fire. It happened in Australia, in the, in the great outback of Australia. California, very common, every year in California, in some of the top uh, localities like Malibu and uh, Beverly Hills also. Uh, nearby there are a lot of forests and a small spark sets the whole forest on fire and they have to use aircrafts to, from top uh, put water on the forest. How does it start off? A small little spark. A small spark spreads like wildfire all over the place. Similarly, the tongue. We may, we may be very strong people. Six feet, five inches tall, like a basketball player, seven feet tall. But one loose word spoken, the whole personality gets affected. The perception of people about a, such a person is what he speaks or what, or, uh, of course, what he does also. But one loose word spoken affects the whole personality of the person. So we come in the way of God's workmanship. We're not careful about what we speak. Look at the next word, very strong words. Verse 6. I've talked about a big forest is set on fire by a small spark. What does uh, James write in verse 6? The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is self set on fire by hell. Very strong words. A small part, tongue is like a fire. Corrupts the whole person. Here there is a God who wants to work at us, transform us, make us a display to the world. And one word spoken, we corrupt the whole person. Not just the words we speak. The whole person gets corrupted by one loose word spoken. And it's a fire. It's set on fire in hell, it says. The word hell here, the Greek word is genes, genesin. And there's a short form for the word Gehenna. Gehenna, as we all know, whenever I speak on death, I speak on different hells. Uh, Hades, Tartarus, Gehenna. Gehenna is a final hell. It's a lake of burning sulfur. Uh, Revelation chapter 20, 13 to 15, where it says, Hades and death will go up as dead into Gehenna. And the Gehenna, a uh, uh, variant of Gehenna is Guinness, Guinness and used here, which means this tongue is a fire. It's set on fire in hell one day. So we have to give an account of every careless word we've spoken and everything we speak, God takes note of. Uh, Malachi, third chapter, verse 16, it's written, 
Then those who feared the Lord spoke to each other. The Lord listened and heard. And the scroll of remembrance was written down. Very often I share this, that every word we speak, God takes note of. Now, as I am talking to you, my words are noted by God. And I believe my angels are busy writing down whatever I say. So on record, also on YouTube, but both on YouTube, I'm concerned about heaven only. And you're all keeping quiet, I hope, and listening. And after finishing the message, you'll go and talk to people. And whatever you speak is noted down. Whatever we speak. And especially when we speak among people, they are watching. They are watching. Whatever we speak, wherever we speak, is noted down. I know many of us, when we share the gospel with our colleagues in the office, we are very careful after sharing gospel to good, give a good impression to them, good image. Behave properly before your colleagues. You share the gospel, no? they are watching you. Then you are very careful about what you speak. Because you are very concerned that I have shared gospel. They are watching me. I better live a holy life and speak right words. But other people who may not share the gospel, we may be a little casual. Because we don't share gospel, so we, they don't know our faith. But remember one thing, you may not have shared the gospel with them. But somebody else has done. Some other person somewhere has shared the gospel with that person. Once a person hears the gospel, he or she watches every Christian. So here's a person in your office who has not heard gospel from you. She is not here, she has not heard. But she has heard from somebody else. And that person watching you because you are a Christian. So don't take leave from speaking holy words. Don't take leave. Don't take, be casual. All the time you be careful. Like I said, ambassador. An ambassador of a country is always heard by the journalists, always watched, the tractor. And whatever he, is, he or she says is taken as India says. And therefore, while God is working in us to show us to the whole world as witnesses, we may be careful about this tongue, which is a dangerous part of the body. Very restless, evil, full of deadly poison. Okay, let's go on from here. Uh, verse 7. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. No man can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil, full of deadly poison. Full of deadly poison. Have you heard this term? People saying, no, this person has got a venomous tongue. A venomous tongue. A secular saying it is. But look at the scripture what it says. Full of deadly poison. He poison people by slandering them. Gossiping about them, enlarging malicious talk, cursing them, full of deadly poison. Restless evil, full of deadly poison. Restless means you can't keep quiet. Unless you speak these things to pull the people down, then you don't feel comfortable. But as Christians, we can't feel comfortable when we speak loose words. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. But only what is useful for building up others, according to this, they will benefit those who listen. Don't let any unwholesome talk. Unwholesome talk means talk that pulls down people, malicious people, malicious talk against people, to never come out of our mouths. Rather, instead of that, we speak words of edification to build up people. Now, this term, no man can tame the tongue, can be very, very intimidating. No man can tame the tongue. So, how can I make I will tame my tongue? Maybe on December 31st, we make a new resolution. No, new resolution. From next year, I will not gossip. I will not slander. Within two, two weeks after that, slander and gossip. No man can tame the tongue. But praise God. What man cannot do, God can do. So give your tongue to the Lord, not just tongue. Give your heart, your ears, and your eyes to God. Because what we speak comes from the heart. Jesus said, 
So what goes in man's mouth that makes him unclean, what comes out of his mouth makes him unclean. 12th chapter of Matthew, verse 34, Jesus says, From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. From the abundance, overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we can't control our tongue just because a heart is full of all kinds of things. The venom is not really in the mouth. It's in the heart. Poison. It's full of deadly poisons. Because the heart has filled with all kinds of unwanted things. Very often I talk about the 14 things that Jesus spoke about which are in the hearts of men. When you compare Matthew 15, 19, Matthew 15, 19, with Mark 7, 22, they identify, Jesus identified 14 different things in the hearts of men. Matthew 15, 19, evil thoughts, murder, adultery, evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual morality, theft, false testimony, and slander. And Mark 7, 22, talks about greed, Malice, envy, greed, malice, deceit, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, arrogance, folly. They're all in the heart. That's why we speak and we can't control our, our tongue. The tongue speaks what is in the heart. When you circumcise the heart of all these things and fill a heart with the word of God, what happens? From the over of the heart, the mouth speaks. What does the mouth speak? The word of God. If you keep on hearing God's word, reading God's word, a heart is full of God's word. It's a saying in computer technology, last in, first out. In a, in a, a computer storage, memory storage, last in, first out. What, memory is full of many things. And you keep on storing things. What comes last? First thing can go away. What are the first things? The 14 things are in the heart. Last in, God's word. The more God's word comes in, the more these things go out. Very simple logic. Very plain simple. Because God's word cleanses. In John 15, 3, Jesus says, John 15, 3, you are already clean because the word I have spoken to you. So the reason why we can't tame our tongue is because the tongue speaks what's in the heart. How does four things go to the heart? By what we see, what we hear. We keep on hearing gossip. Heart is full of gossip. And the book of Proverbs, 18 chapter verse 8, we read, 18 chapter verse 8, the words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go to the inner, inner parts. Inner part means the spirit, heart of man. Keep on listening to gossip, like choice morsels. They go into a inner part. Spirit gets contaminated. What we see, Worthless things occupy the mind. The mind keeps on thinking the same things. From the mind, it goes into the heart. That's why in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 14, Jeremiah 4, 14, the Lord tells his people, O Jerusalem, wash the sin from my heart and be saved. How long will you harbor wicked thoughts? Voice it, voice it from your heart and be saved. How long will you harbor wicked thoughts? When you keep on harboring wicked thoughts, what's the meaning of harboring? Allowing the ship to drop anchor in the port. In Cochin port, when a ship goes past, sometimes they go past, sometimes they drop anchor. Drop anchor means you stay put there, harboring. Some ships go past, some harbor. In the port. What does God say? Oh, Jerusalem, what's in from my heart? Me say, How long will you have a wicked thoughts? Keep on thinking wicked thoughts from the mind, it percolates into the heart. I'm using the word percolates. I've seen coffee percolator. You put coffee powder in the night with the, with the, the tissue, and then water slowly, per morning, you have nice decoction. Percolation. Coffee percolator. Similarly, <laughs> You find the heart gets polluted by the percolation from the mind to the heart. So really, if you want the tongue to be according to God's will, be careful what you hear, be careful what you see, and the mind should process what's right 
and leave out what is wrong. You find in the book of Psalms, chapter 119, 36 and 37. Psalm 119, 36, 37. Where the psalmist says, Turn my heart towards your statutes and not towards selfish gain. Turn my heart towards your statutes, not towards selfish gain. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Eye is the problem. Eyes keep on seeing something, worthless things, the worthless things occupy the mind. Then what happens? It goes to the heart. So when you keep on thinking about things that please God, heart is full of things that please God. So really, the problem is the eye, ear, mind, and heart. Not really the tongue. Praise God, what man cannot tame, the tongue, God can tame. So please offer willingly, joyfully, this part of your body, the troublesome part, restless evil, full of deadly poison. Say, Lord, remove the poison and put a balm, balm, balm of healing, balm of edification, balm to bless people, and God will do it. He will change our weakness and make it a strength. If you are prone to gossiping, now start speaking well of people. If you are prone to slander, start, start speaking well of people. And ask God to give you that revelation and wisdom to speak the right words. Let's go on from here. Verse, verse 9. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. What a statement there is. Same tongue, we praise God and curse people. Now the word praising is a word called uh, eulogia. Eulogia means to speak well of. To speak well of. With the same mouth, we praise God, speak well of God. What a wonderful God we have God. Praise God, wonderful God. He's so kind, kind, so loving. Speak well of it. The same mouth, we curse people. The word curses in Greek is katara. Katara means to speak in love, to wish bad for people. So cursing doesn't necessarily mean only uh, curses that come from the occult. With occult forces, people can put spells on other people. It's possible. They can cast spells, witchcraft, sorcery, all we can do. People can do that. So that is one kind of cursing. But cursing generally means speaking bad about people. Wishing them bad. Or oh, I wish the fellow face the consequences of actions. I wish he faces consequence. Lord, punish him, Lord. Because sometimes we say, don't say punish him. We say, Lord, he harmed me. Don't punish him. But tonight he mustn't sleep. Let him wriggle in the bed. Wriggle. Don't sleep. Let him not sleep. That's also wishing will. With the same mouth, we can't praise God and curse people. It should not be. And they're made in God's image. It's a different thing that the image got distorted in the Garden of Eden. Every human being is made in God's image. Their image got distorted when man sinned against God. Today, as Christians, it says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 10, Colossians 3, 10, we have been renewed in the image of the Creator. We have been renewed in the image of the Creator. That image is God's image. Other people are not in this world. I'm not, I don't know, not in the Lord. Those not in the Lord, unbelievers, they are also made in God's image. The image got distorted. The distorted image. When they turn to Christ, it will be renewed. Having said that, since mankind is made in God's image, don't curse anyone. Our enemy is not people. Our enemy is the devil. Don't have to curse him also. God can deal with them, already dealt with them. So, in other words, don't ever speak ill of people, be it slander, malice, gossip, whatever, don't. And on the other hand, speak words of edification. As we praise God, speak well of people, wish them well, and that pleases God. Now, the question is, sometimes we say, this man doesn't deserve my praises, my, my well uh, wishes. He's a very bad man. We said that. But when you pray for people who are troubling you, you bless them, it pleases God. Look at the Apostle Paul, what example he said for us. He says, follow me as I follow the Lord. 
follow me as I follow the Lord. First Corinthians 11, chapter verse 1. Look at the way he responded to a people who slander, who persecute, who put him down. In First Corinthians 4, chapter 12 and 13, he writes, When we are cursed, we bless. When people curse us, we bless them. He speaks well of them. Eulogy, eulogia. They curse me, but I bless them. When we are persecuted, we endure. We endure persecution. When we are slandered, we answer kindly. When people slander us, we answer them kindly. What an amazing perspective. We should not slander. We should not curse. We should persecute anybody. Obviously, we don't persecute anybody. But when they slander us, answer kindly. When they curse you, you bless them. When they gossip, we ignore. Let them gossip. You can't help it. So God wants us to be very, very careful about the words we speak because this mouth that praises God, speaks well of God, cannot at a different time curse people. Let's go on. I'll read this to us. I'll come back to this next on, on Monday. It was very important. I'm sorry, Monday I won't be able to. And the following week, Monday I will. But I'll just finish this too. It is very self-explanatory. There's nothing, no rocket science here. It's science for children. <laughs> God's, word, God's word for children. Verse 10 and 11 and 12. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Clear. This should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So beautiful. Very simple. For children it is. You are a child of God. You praise God. How can you curse people? Salt water and fresh water can't come from the same spring. Fig tree can't bear olives. Fig tree has fig seed. Olive tree has olive seed. We have seed of God in us. Therefore, we speak God's word. Very simple. Orange tree cannot bear apple fruit. Apple seed cannot bear orange fruit. God's seed cannot bear fruit of sinful nature. Only bear fruit of the spirit. And therefore, remember who we are. We are God's people. We have the seed of God in us. Therefore, when you are full of the word of God, from the abundant heart, the mouth speaks. So keep hearing God's word, reading God's word, have conversation centered on God's word, Christ centered conversation. If and after some time that you are full of His grace and mercy, you speak words of edification, not destruction. May God bless us. Wonderful passage. And if any questions you have, you can ask on next time we meet also because. Of I'm always uh, amazed by this passage and it's always a mirror for me that be very careful about what you speak. We are all servants of God, your teachers, and you must be very careful about what we speak. God bless you all. We'll meet again. Uh, and it's going to be, I'm going to miss you all in <laughs> the Zoom session next week. We'll be in Pune. But we'll be coming back uh, on, uh, on the 18th, 18th morning. We'll have the next morning. Bible. God bless you.